Hi, this is Charles Kelly, Money Tips. Commodity prices have now hit the highest level since the 2008 financial crash, which, and we know what happened after that. You know, we saw stock markets collapse, we saw property prices go down, and we saw money dry up as banks started pulling in loans. Now, oil and gas prices have, have again soared. Oil, I think, was at $110 a barrel, or $113 a barrel at one point today. And this comes amid supply chain worries that you know supplies of gas and, and oil because let's face it Russia is one of the biggest producers of gas and oil in the world as, as well as uh, uh, Ukraine and Russia producing most of the world's wheat and these are major commodities so we've seen these worries drive up prices as that there's a fear that there will be a, a shortage and when there's a fear that there's a shortage wholesale prices go up as people scramble to, to buy and inflation is already at you know, a 30 year high in, in the UK and, and the US and in, in parts of Europe. And there's no sign of uh, relief here for consumers and businesses that will see their costs continue to, to rise. So that will eventually, as, as business costs rise, they will have to pass that on to the consumer. And I can see this already in some local businesses already putting up their prices because they, they have to, it, otherwise they'll just go under. And now stock markets again have fallen. Uh, now last week they did fall sharply as I was doing my podcast and then they kind of bounced back a little bit towards the end of the week and, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday they've been sort of hovering, you know, dropping down a bit, maybe coming up a little bit. So they've been fairly uh, stable, treading water as it were. But today on a Thursday now that they've fallen again and the FTSE, the 100 index, that's the top 100 index. Uh, companies quoted on the FT uh, stock exchange, the, 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 the FTSE they call it, uh, was down 190 points. That's billions of pounds off the value of companies. That's 2.57%. And the, the 250 index was down even further at 3.5%, down 696 points. And US markets were also down as well, again wiping billions of dollars off the value of companies. Uh, you know, the NASDAQ, S&P 500 and the Dow were all down. And, you know, this comes now, you know, we're seeing that, that there's sanctions been imposed and Russia's economy appears to be in free fall as these sanctions force a collapse in, in the value of the ruble and the value of the stock market in, in Russia, the Russian stock markets. But, you know, businesses are, are now severing ties with Russia. A lot of deals have been pulled out, you know, the Olympics and football matches and, and uh, BP and Shell are pulling out of major deals to explore more oil in, in Russia. Uh, so, you know, it, it's it's a big deal for Russia and even, the you know, they, they've sanctioned on uh, the SWIFT payment system. This this allows uh, companies to send money around the world. Uh, even, even the central banks have been sent, sanctioned. Uh, central banks are sent, sanctioning Russia for the first time. Now in, the, in the UK, MPs are putting the government under pressure to... Uh, you know, to, to seize assets, literally, of billionaire oligarchs who, who live in London. There are many Russians living in London in you know, multi-million pound houses in the best part of town, in, in Mayfair, in Knightsbridge and, and Kensington. And, you know, I, I, I think in one, in one sense, people say, yeah, get their money, the greedy people. You know, but not all of these are, are, are criminals. You know, they've come to the, to the UK with their money. We were happy to take it. We were happy to sell our properties to them. And, and now it seems a bit churlish to sort of want to seize those those assets. But uh, one person who's sort of trying to make his escape really at the moment is Roman Abramovich, who is a, a, a Russian oil billionaire who made his money during the collapse of, of Russia after the Berlin Wall fell. And he uh, has invested heavily in the UK. He's got a house, I think, worth about 20 million in, in Palace Green, you know, just behind... Uh, where Princess Diana lived in, in uh, Kensington Gardens. And it's this sort of private road where there's lots of embassies there. And that's what I think the Russian embassy is there as well, actually. Uh, so it, it's a very sought after spot. And the, the houses are like huge, big mansions. And he's trying to sell this house very quickly. So if you want to make a, an offer there, there might be a, a prime property there to be, uh, to be had. But he's also selling his beloved Chelsea Football Club, which he's ran since 2003 and has poured you know, millions of pounds into Chelsea to, to, to bring them up for, from the doldrums to winning about 19 trophies in, in the last 20 years or so. So it, it's amazing what he's done there. Now, uh, sanctions, 
you know, whilst whilst they'll you know they're going to hit the Russian economy, they're also going to hit our economy as well, because there's there's no doubt going to be some tit for tat sanctions from from the Russian side, and you know, of course, we're seeing that in the UK energy bills are are going up again. We've already seen the energy bills double now. Uh, one headline said that they could go up to three thousand pounds a year for average households. That's energy bills, gas and electricity. Well, th- well, that used to be, uh, you know, even for me in a HMO property was was about twelve hundred a year, a hundred pounds a month or thereabouts, maybe a little bit more. Um, and you know, it wasn't a big deal. Now it could be, you know, but that that's that it could be now treble that almost as as bills are going up. And I've had a letter this week saying, you know, the cheapest tariff is this, which is you know, three more than double what I'm paying now, and uh, and then if I fix it, do I if I get it into a fixed deal, uh, will prices come down later on in the year? I I just don't know what to do. Uh, so, you know, with 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 this going on, we're all going to see uh, problems with 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 our economy as well. Uh, and you know, also you've got to think that with Russia and other countries having dollar-denominated assets seized, and we saw this recently with Afghanistan. Uh, maybe the world is looking at, at this and saying, well, is this the end or is this the time we should maybe see the end of the dominance of the, the dollar as the, the world uh, reserve currency? Now, during war times, we often see a change. Like After World War II, we saw the dominance of the British pound go after the Bretton Woods uh, ag- agreement. And then the dollar became the, the world uh, reserve currency. And, you know, after the and then. And, and now then uh, Kissinger then uh, did a deal with Arabs to the Arab nations to th- that all oil will be sold in, in dollars. Uh, so for the, for, the, for the rest of the world doing business with America, you have to have dollars. And these countries also hold uh, an enormous amount of uh, dollar reserves in U.S. Treasury bonds. But is the world now saying, well, you know, we've had enough of this. It, it's an enormous advantage to, to the U.S., and, you know, we're seeing the U.S. just, you know, printing more money, basically. So and that's devaluing the dollar. And, and you know, we're, we are seeing the rise of digital currencies. I'm not just about Bitcoin. I'm talking about uh, government denominated di- digital currencies or uh, central bank uh, d- denominated digital currencies like, like, like we've seen in China. And, you know, could this mean that to get round sanctions, they, they will look to find an, another way of dealing with money and uh, that, that does not involve the dollar being the reserve currency. As I said, it's an enormous advantage for, for the US because, you know, they can buy stuff in their own currency. They can print their own currencies as, as they like. Uh, so it, it, it has seen the US become the biggest economy in the world uh, since, since uh, the Second World, world War. But, but we'll have to see. That's, that's uh, a, a stuff that governments will have to be dealing with and... and uh, uh, we, we don't know what will happen there, but it could happen in, in the next few years. I don't think it's going to happen immediately. Now, on to property news. Now, I was talking about bills there. Uh, now, HMO landlords, uh, and, and I've got a HMO, which means a house in multiple occupation. Now, these landlords often rent rooms on the basis that all bills are included, like Wi-Fi, gas, electricity, council tax, and that sort of thing. Uh, now, th- they are going to be hit with these higher bills because the bills are down to them. And it's not always easy to just say to, to tenants, look, you've got to pay extra because these bills are going up uh, because there are other choices around. And on some landlords let to people that are on uh, benefits where the, the rent is paid by, uh, by, by the government, in effect, by, for universal credit. And, and they certainly can't uh, get any more rent than they're getting right now. So, so they are going to, to feel, be feeling the pinch this year. And let, let's hope that things... Do, do settle down eventually that we're not going to see long term high prices because it really is hitting inflation and it's sucking money out of the economy. Now, the nationwide survey was published a couple of days ago and it reported that there was a, a 12.6 percent annual increase in properties to February 2022. They said the typical cost of a house rose by nearly £30,000, which is a record cash increase in property prices since they started doing their own survey in 1991. Now, the official survey is, is really the, the land registry figures. And, and when, when they come out, you'll see what prices actually sold for across the board. The Halifax and the Nationwide are, are two of the biggest lenders, so they, they have their own figures. But, you know, whether it's 10 or 12 percent, it's still a big increase. 
Um, and you know, I think in the last two years, they say it's gone up by over 20%. So it is making things more difficult, but prices seem to be still going up. Average cost of a home now is over 260,000 pounds, but that's average across the country. You know, in parts of the country, you can still buy a house for, or you can certainly buy flats for 30,000. You can buy houses for 50 or 60,000 in some parts of the country, but in London and the Southeast, it's, it's more like half a million. Uh, to, to buy an average property. Even a flat in London would, would set you back that amount. Uh, so property prices have been driven, the, the nationwide say, by uh, continued demand for properties, uh, even though there, there is a bit of a shortage. And this is particularly true, particularly true in outside city areas, where we're in, in smaller villages and smaller towns uh, away from the city, where people want more space and you know, maybe a better quality of life, cleaner air and that sort of thing. Uh, but I don't know how long this will last. This is fine when you're working from home and you don't have to travel into the office. But we're seeing that property prices in, in the city, in, in London, um, have uh, started to go up a little bit. Uh, and, and rentals are definitely on the move as people are being called back in, into the office. Uh, but retail and shops are, are, have really taken a hammering in the last few years. I was in one shopping mall recently and it, was, it looked dead. You know, there were big uh, companies like Debenhams that are just gone. And it sucked the heart out of these, these uh, retail communities. And, you know, once one starts to go and you see some boarded up uh, shops, then it can, can almost lead to a domino effect of, of other shops then closing down. Now, just another thing on the, on the uh, property news. If you own a second property in Wales, in, in some of the, uh, the beach areas, you could see a 300% council tax hike as the, the Welsh government, which is made up of a socialist, Plaid Cymru and, and Labour coalition, uh, have, have, you know, they, they want to drive out second homeowners so that more of the locals can af afford those houses, which I, I guess, uh, you know, you, you look at it from their point of view, they, they can't afford to buy these small houses anymore because people from places like London will just buy them up cheap and use them as, as holiday homes. And this was particularly uh, uh, the case during the lockdown when people couldn't go abroad. And people thought, well, you know, let's, let's buy a little holiday home in, in Wales. I mean, some beautiful, I was there last summer, and some beautiful uh, coastlines there, beautiful countryside. And, and, it, and it's a drive rather than, than a flight. So we'll have to, you know, watch that with interest. I'm not sure that's going to affect every part of Wales because a lot of uh, London buyers have bought properties to rent in, in Wales and you know, buy and refurbish and rent out uh, and, and very cheap they were going for. I don't think it's going to affect every part of Wales because they still need landlords in there to rent properties and, and there's a lot of benefit rentals in, in that part of the country uh, as well. A lot of Wales is a bit depressed. Uh, the economy is not good in every part of Wales. Uh, they've suffered from heavy industry going and the mines of course. Uh, so, so Wales, parts of Wales are, are very poor. Uh, but could we see a return of coal mining and coal-powered power stations as, you know, we're looking to become less dominant on Russian gas? Uh, maybe we're going to frack in, but could the coal mines be? We don't know. Germany has already said, and, and they're run by a Green Party uh, government now. They've already talked about opening up more coal-fired uh, uh, power stations because they've got coal and we've got a lot of coal here as well but of course this goes against all of this climate uh, targets that we've we've signed up for so it'd be interesting to see how that goes but I know in China and India they're still burning coal for for power so why are we being left behind and, and this is part of the reason why we're paying more for our gas and electricity because there is a 25% levy on our bills to pay for these these green uh, initiatives so, you know, but, but you can look around yourself and, and see what's going on. Take a look at any shopping mall and see where the shopping malls are going. But, you know, whether you are in a market, whether, whether the market's going up or down, you can learn how to make money out of property, whatever's happening to the market, whether it's up, down or sideways. And this is what professional property investors do. They have strategies which work in a rising market or a bull market and in a falling bear market. And we could be coming up to a bear market because I, I, I can't see how these uh, price rises are sustainable when, you know, we, we've seen a, a lot of turmoil in the markets, a lot of turmoil in business. We're seeing interest rates going up here and, and in the US to come. It will come. And, and that is certainly going to hit the property market. Mortgage rates are already, have already gone up uh, here 
And I believe they're going up in America as well prior to interest rate rises. So it'll be interesting to see how this all, all pans out there. Uh, but but I, I, I really can't see uh, any prospect of record property prices, uh, price increases this year. But you can make money in a falling market. And that's where, to be honest, more of the opportunities lie in, in, in a market where you know, everybody's running scared. That's where you can pick up the bargains, as you can in the, in the stock market. But look, if you want to get control of your finances in 2022, I'm putting up some free training here. Uh, look at that. It's, it's, uh, it, it would teach you really how to uh, really follow the habits of people who've already made a lot of money, whether they're, they're millionaires or billionaires, because they leave success tracks. So have a look at that free training and you can learn how to get control of your finances in 2022, how to become financially free without necessarily the, the sacrifice and pain that you think it will be, because a lot of it is down to your, your mindset and, and your, your money habits. So have a look at that and I'll, I'll be back with you again soon. So, so take care out there. Have a look at that free training and I'll, I'll see you again soon. This is Charles Kelly bringing you money tips to help you save, earn, invest, accumulate and enjoy more money. Bye for now.